think you used to get your breakfast there. Didn't I know, you? yeah, you used to yeah, get, you'd get uh, food there, and that it was yeah, great. Play all night, and then, yeah. uh, or you'd be there all night after you'd done your set, and uh, but you know you'd stay to watch the other bands, and you know it didn't go home. You know, end up having breakfast and uh, and then go home. You know, and <laughs> sleep, <laughs> sleep, <laughs> sleep all Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the great things at that particular time was no alcohol. <laughs> so I think a lot of the energy was quite pure and, and uh, very vibrant. So it's yeah, very exciting times. Oh God, the all night sessions. They were something else. I mean, there, there wasn't a better gig. There wasn't a better venue for all night sessions than the Arundel. You can take the jacket and you take the Blue Angel, you can take the cavern. The but the 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 the, the, the was was the inn. That was the key place. It was brilliant. The earliest memory of the Iron Door is the smell, the atmosphere, the stirs, and the fact that uh, those of us that worked in the city at the time, we always used to take extended lunch times to go to the uh, lunchtime sessions, uh, particularly if you're playing in the lunchtime sessions. But the, the Iron Door uh, was is very much sort of underestimated in its contribution to music in Liverpool. In spite of that sort of being uh, early 60s or so, around 1960, I, I suppose it was, rock and roll was still vibrant and new and it was so many groups coming onto the scene that you could chop and change groups on a, on a daily basis if you wanted, you know. Rock bands were growing on trees in those days and it was just great to be part of it. The atmosphere tonight and the people who turned up here tonight and the bands um, well, I, I can't describe it, it's, it's, it's just awesome. Tonight, we're just trying to bring it back to people's memory, the Iron Door for what it was, because for years, Jeff has been saying to me, all he say is the Cavern and the Beatles, and the Beatles actually played at the Iron Door before the Cavern. Making our first appearance at the Iron Door, I mean, it was just teeming with people, fantastic screams and... We were almost pop stars before we made records, really. So I think, I think that feeling that the fans at the Iron Door gave us, um, they built us into something. We felt as though maybe we were going to make the big time, even though we hadn't. But that was because of of something that was that the Iron Door, the Iron Door held a magical thing. I think more so for us, than the, more so than the Cavern. The Iron Door had that magical feeling. Um, and I think, you know, it, it is associated with the searches in a big, big way. I really was a rock and roll fan, masquerading as a promoter. I just love rock and roll that much, you know. And um, that began, coincidentally, the same night that Paul met John, with when I first started in the Attic Club. We called the Attic Club as opposed to the Cavern, you know. That was in... Uh, a little place in Walton Road, a little garage. I remember putting uh, the record on in the interval. And I was all made up to see the kids dancing to what I was doing. That was it. <laughs> the cavern was only doing jazz, you know. I've been promoting rock and roll for five years. Casanova Club, then I met Jeff O'Gott. And I uh, said, all right, Jeff, we put some shows on. I promoted them at the end. I did, I think, the first four, four months. And uh, it's great, great, you know. We took advantage of the fact that the cavern didn't realise what was happening. Uh, Jeff was a bit worried about, he thought, well, he's sure it's going to pay. So we had the best night you've ever had. And do you remember Jeff? He never stopped, he never sold so many hot dogs. <laughs> he worked hard all night, Jeff, it was good. And we've been getting pals then. And we've stayed that way over all these years, you know. One memory that made me smile was the, um, we had that many people and the Beatles had a different am American amplifier. It was wired differently. And the, the conversations coming down the walls and they had to stand on amplifier covers because they could have got electrocuted. And when you think how close that was, and it was dangerous, you know, but they enjoyed it. <laughs> I assume of that. Paul said, we can get electrocuted here. I said, you're getting paid, get on with it. Tonight, meeting all the old faces that, uh, you know, I've worked with, I mean, 
I'm planning. Uh, I don't know how to do it, to be honest with you. I've got contracts for every one of these bands, over 200 of them. The contracts of various artists who actually worked through our books. And I don't know whether to go around presenting their contracts to them in a frame or having a big night like this you've had tonight and doing it uh, and presenting them to them. Because I think they'd be proud to hold them because they're signed by Brian Epstein and myself for very little money as it went in those days. But in those days, I suppose it was big money. I mean, 30 quid or whatever, sometimes nine pounds expenses only. But in those days, I suppose it was suitable, you know, but that's what we work for and that's what they got. But the Iron Door stands out as being yeah. one of the very it, best, it, you know. played its part in the evolution of the Mersey sound, yeah. there's no doubt about it, you know. And the groups that are on here tonight, like Lee Curtis and Jeff Nugent's Undertakers, King Size Taylor, I mean, these, these, these people I saw the first time around. I mean, I'm coming on 57 now and it's just like stepping back 40 years it really is nostalgic and it's a little bit upsetting but nice in a nice way in a nice way the iron door uh, was is very much sort of underestimated in its contribution to music in liverpool it's just like the old days just exactly like the like it used to be all these bands here that you've seen tonight they're, they're all, all uh, iron door bands these are the bands that they all used to go and watch it's been special because there's not many of us left and I haven't heard it from Jeff in 20, 25, 30 years and it was nice when, when I was approached to do the show for tonight for Jeff Algarf I thought yeah we'll do it and that's it. It's fantastic to see them all tonight, they've hardly changed you know, it's amazing. It's always great to come back to the port and see what we places. And I think it's been nostalgic for everybody. And in fact, one of the notes actually says <laughs> we were the very first English group to record Sherry by the Four Seasons. And the note I've got is from the woman to say I still never gave it to back. <laughs> when I was in 1962 or something like that, you know, went to her house, borrowed it. And she said, not that that matters, it's just great to come here. And actually said, and I think that sums up what the evening has been about is it's brought nostalgia, memories, everything, the camaraderie. I mean look at the lads here now. No backbiting, they're just going and doing the job. And that's the way it was and that's the way it'll always be with them. I wanted to try and keep the name of the Iron Door alive. Uh, you know, I don't want it to uh, disappear. Uh, I mean it's a forgotten club and I'm trying to revive it again which hopefully is going to be a start to uh, the, its revival you've seen how many people have been here tonight so uh, you know it might be a good start so the Iron Door for me obviously has a, a place in my, in my heart 